All right, so today I wanted to just jump in here very quickly and talk about Slaver Zero X. It just dropped on the Nintendo Switch, and as many of you know, I'm actually relocating from the US to the UK right now, so I can't do my usual, you know, edited, refused, scripted, kind of play these games the whole way through. But this is a game I've been extremely excited for, but I have had a, like a lot of concerns around how it's going to perform on the system. And that is what I want to talk about today, because I did review this game on XP Corner, the PlayStation 5 build. Going to be linking that down below for you all, so do maybe check that out after if you want to just, I guess, learn more about the game itself. I'll give you kind of a quick overview today. But yeah, let's talk about the performance, what I'm seeing so far. I've kind of spent 45 minutes, an hour with the game, a few levels in at this point, a couple of boss battles. And yeah, it's definitely a, a unique experience, one of the hardest games I've personally honestly played in a long time. This game is absolutely brutal and that's why I do think this game definitely kind of lives or dies by its frame rate and really what it's doing there because if you start to see drops what is already one of the hardest games I've played becomes a whole lot harder. So yeah if you do enjoy this video subscribe it truly is appreciated it honestly means the world to us. And yeah let's get into it. So first of all, Slave Zero X, it's a prequel to what was a Dreamcast game. I never played that personally, but it is quite a bit different, or at least that's my understanding. From what I know, that game was kind of a third-person adventure game. This is a 2D hack and slash action platformer, I guess, minor platforming in here. Um, and really, it's, it's really going for this in-depth combat system. It's all about combos and really learning all of these different skills. Now, the story, it's basically the tale of a character called Xiao. Uh, he is a warrior that essentially merges with a slave unit prototype. That's the kind of red devil figure you're going to see through much of the gameplay today. But basically, it turns you into, I guess, a one-man killing machine. These slave units are not intended for this purpose and essentially this slave unit is now battling back against its creators. Uh, the slave unit can talk as well as a lot of dialogue between these two characters but essentially the big kind of overarching goal here is we're out to take down evil. Kind of the usual jazz. Um, what I really enjoyed about the game was this kind of this I guess romantic subplot to it all. Essentially it really is kind of this mission of uh, fighting for someone you love. It doesn't really define if it's boyfriend or husband, but your character, he is constantly kind of having flashbacks to this relationship that he had built up. And clearly it was something that was very important to him. It's kind of, I guess, almost sent him off the deep end, so to speak, but seems extremely justified. But yeah, anyway, the gameplay, um, as I said, I really enjoy the game. Action platforming, it's, it's got this really unique 2.5D style to it all. So as you're running around left to right, the camera's actually going to be rotating. Your character's on a, a fixed path, of course, but it really makes for this unique style that you just, you don't see all that often. I do think the combat here is absolutely fantastic as well. As I said, it's very combo driven, so it's really learning to use these different moves that you have at your disposal. So there's a light and a heavy attack, but if you combine those with different inputs, it's going to lead to a different result. You can hold the attacks for more powerful iterations, I guess. Um, there's a boost move that pushes all enemies around you away that's on kind of a charger. There's very much a lot of meters in this game. There's also EX moves as well, specials. And what these do is not only do they deliver more power to your character, and you're just going to see blood and guts flying everywhere in this one. But also what it does is it actually allows you to restore your own health as well. So it becomes kind of part of that tactical gameplay element. If you don't spend time trying to master the combat with this game you're just not going to enjoy it honestly this is not a game that you can go into and butter mash you need to realize what moves do what what's going to put you in the best possible position what's going to be a good defensive measure there's one where spikes fire from the floor for example i use that a lot because it allows me to then dive into a combo and kind of air juggle these enemies if you don't stun like them i promise you they're going to stun like you next um the game can be a little unfair and cheap at times transparently a few of the enemies do stun like you consistently. It can definitely go for an angle of let's just overwhelm the player with tons of enemies. And that definitely proves pub problematic. You know, your combat is, I wouldn't say it's clunky, but it's very methodical. So having 20, 30 enemies on screen at once at times isn't necessarily the best way to play. There is a parry as well. I'm personally absolutely useless. Sadly, I'm not a big fan of the implementation. Basically, if you want to parry, if an enemy is coming towards you, you need to tap the direction towards. I mean, it just feels unnatural moving towards a character, you know, someone that's taking a swing at you. So it's going to take a lot of 
almost rewiring that brain to really get used to. For me personally, I was using a lot of the, the dash ability. This allows you, well, it gives you momentary invincibility frames, very small window, but you can get used to it. You're gonna absolutely need that in some of the boss encounters. I managed to get through the first boss in this switch build first time. And that's only realistically because I had that experience with the PlayStation 5 build where I did overcome the game. It took me about eight hours. It is, as I said, brutally difficult. It starts hard. It just keeps on getting harder and harder from there. When it does come to the problems of this game though, there's a few things, honestly, as I said, it can be a little cheap with some of its enemies. Um, the platforming is quite honestly, just horrible. Um, it just feels incredibly clunky. You can jump or double jump, um, but this character has near to no flexibility at times. So what you need to do is strate strategically, I guess, like you, you want to wall jump basically. So you wall jump off a surface and then you can actually jump a second time towards where you want to be. It becomes really frustrating some of the platforming until you get, do you get your head around it. So definitely practice that early on in the experience. Um, also, I will say with the gameplay as well, the tutorial is one of the worst I have seen in a long time. The opening of the game throws you straight in and then it gives you about 10 to 15 pages of just text introducing all of these different moves, all of the elements on the hood. There's no way for you to actually practice what it's teaching you. So it's, you know, light attack, heavy attack, press whatever button it may be. There's no way for you to actually do that alongside it. So it's really hard to learn. You just got to read, memorize and kind of hope you can, uh, you know, remember it all once you get into the game. So it's definitely something when you load in, you should definitely be, you know, quickly practicing as soon as possible, because I promise you, you're going to forget exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Um, but yeah, anyway, so let's talk about this Switch version of the game. First of all, I think it looks good. I think visually it looks as interesting and as unique as it did when I played it on the PlayStation 5. Obviously, we're seeing the resolution downgrade. But aside from that, I haven't put them side by side. But for me, they look very similar. I, I, I wouldn't be disappointed with how this game looks at all. I think if you ask me which build I wanted to play based on that, I'd have a tough time choosing, honestly. And the idea of this game in a handout actually makes a lot of sense to me. I think it's going to be extremely difficult on a small screen at times, given the number of enemies. However, I do think it would still be, you know, a lot of fun. Um, audio as well, same thing. Sounds good. Uh, a lot of voice acting throughout the game. All of the characters have their own unique actors. They've done a really good job of kind of delivering across the entire board. I, I really brought into this storyline, really enjoyed the world. It made me want to go and play that original Dreamcast game, which is probably the biggest compliment I could give it because I had no experience, experience with this series. I just kind of thought the character looked cool and that was my sole reason for basically jumping in day one when I did. Um, where we run into problems, however, is unfortunately, and you're probably not gonna be surprised by this, but unfortunately the frame rate. Um, the frame rate as it stands, it's unlocked. It's targeting 60. And I think initially on that first level, you are gonna see that and it feels really good. I actually did a one hour video on this, oh, somewhere in that region, one hour video on this for Game Corner as well. I'll link that down below so you can kind of see my initial reaction to the experience. But as I started to get through the level, I started to notice that the more enemies that were on screen, the more I was starting to feel like the controls were lagging slightly. So I did plug it into my system to kind of get a read on what the frame rate's actually doing here. And yeah, that's really when I, I saw kind of the, the scale of the movements. I'm seeing anywhere just in this first two levels alone. Remember, this is, the game is not yet overwhelming you. It's not pushing you as hard as it will be later in the experience. There's nowhere near as many enemies as you're gonna get on screen at any one time. And it seems to be a combination of how large the environment is around you with how many enemies are on screen, but it's dropping anywhere as low as low 30s. Now that in itself, low 30s, wouldn't be a bad thing. I think you could absolutely work with that. The problem is the frame rate's jumping between low 30s and on average, I'd say low 50s. Sort of, I've seen like 52, 53, sort of 31, 32 as well. Um, that's a big jump when it comes to a game that's all about combo action. It's, it's about quick responses. It's about perfect parries. When I say this game has unforgiving parries, I'm talking, it feels like it's a split second that you get a chance to respond in. So when the frame rate's going all over the place, that's really gonna cause you an issue. I'd never say it's jumping 50-30, 50-30, you know, repetitively, like repeatedly, but what it is doing is it's slowly dropping in the bigger scenes, which is causing me personally a lot of issues, definitely making the game a whole lot harder than it already is, in my opinion. And yet on the second level alone now, it's starting to get to the point where I died a couple of times and 
transparently, if you put me in front of the PlayStation 5 build of this game, I would not be dying at that earlier stage. It's just that that, that split second difference in the responsiveness of the controls means I'm not dashing when I want to be. I'm not parrying when I attempt to, not that I do a lot. And yeah, it's, it's going to prove difficult for me as it stands with this game. It's, it's one of those, if they can't get it to 60, I think it needs to be locked somewhere. So I'd go locked 30 personally. Not feel quite as good because it really is almost like a 1v1 fighting system, you know, combo based almost, you know, like your Street Fighters, your Mortal Kombat. You really want those at 60 where you can be. But if I had the choice between the fluctuations or a solid 30, give me that solid 30 any day. So yeah, um, Slave Zero X, awesome game. I've got a feeling it's only going to get worse from here. I can't guarantee that. As I said, I'm, I'm in the middle of a move right now, so I can't really sit down, unfortunately, spend six, seven hours with the game. Do intend to over the next week or so and have a fuller review here on the channel. But yeah, if these first few levels are anything to go by, even if it stays this way and it's kind of fluctuating between 30 and 50, my recommendation would be pick this up, unfortunately, on any other system first, come to the Switch build last. I'm going to put my XP corner review for you all down below as well, and I'll put the one hour of Switch gameplay footage. And I think even just putting those side by side, watching both videos, you're going to be able to see that difference. So uh, yeah, check it out and see what you think. If you've been playing it on the Switch as well, do let me know because I obviously have that unique position where I played it on PlayStation 5 first, which is always going to make you a little bit more naturally critical when it comes to a version that's maybe not quite at the same place as this one. If I'd played this first, maybe I'd feel a very different. It's just that I'm so comfortable with how good that original build felt. You know, that original build, sorry, felt. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think of the game. If you enjoyed the video, as always, I appreciate it. Just wanted to drop this out there very quickly, as I said. No time, unfortunately, right now for the, the full-on editing or cutting together the game footage. But I do appreciate the support, as always. And if you enjoyed the video, subscribe. Helps out the channel a huge amount. Thanks all.